port numbers do I need to know for one test or another test or this test or that test? Well, here are your common ones. Let's start with CompTIA A+, and I literally just looked up the objectives. Yeah, it looks kind of weird, right? But for the test itself. So CompTIA tells you what you need to know. Let's review it. So the first set of ports that you need to know are 2021, which is FTP, 22, SSH or secure shell, 23, which is Telnet, 25, which is SMTP or simple mail transport protocol, 53, which is DNS, which is an important one, 80, which is HTTP. Of course, that comes with 443, but that's later in the list. And 110, which is POP3, 143, which is IMAP, uh, 443, which is HTTPS, a uh, 3389, which is RDP, your remote desktop protocol. 137 through 139 for NetBIOS, 445 for SMB or server message block, uh, 427 for SLP, 548 for AFP, 6768 for DHCP, 389 for LDAP, and 161, 162 for Simple Network Management Protocol or SMMP. All right, so let's start with basically what the heck is a port number? Well, imagine if different types of data had different freeways or lanes that they had to travel in. Stay in your lane, this is that concept. If you are an email and you are being sent to somebody, you have a specific route or lane that you can be in, and that lane is route 25 or port 25, all outgoing mail, is going to be traveling on port 25. What is port 25? I just mentioned it. What is it? Simple Mail Transport Protocol, SMTP. Okay, cool, so that's how you send an email. But how the heck do you get one back? Well, that depends on if you're using IMAP4 or POP3. Nowadays, you are definitely using IMAP4. The difference between those two is complex, but the simple version is, IMAP4 allows you to get your email on all the different devices instead of POP3, where once you downloaded that data to a certain device, it's not going anywhere else. It left the server, it went to the device, and now it lives there, lost forever on your phone or your laptop or your tablet instead of everywhere. Anyways, those have different port numbers. When you go to retrieve an email from a server, it has to stay in its lane. And the two lane options for that is 110, which is POP3, or 143, which is IMAP4. Cool. Another important one that I mentioned is HTTP. Now, you don't have to know that HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, because that's a mouthful. But even better, you don't have to know that HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transport Protocol over SSL TLS which then stands for secure socket layer or transfer layer security. We'll get into all of that in Security Plus. But for A+, you at least need to understand that port 80, which is HTTP, is not secure web traffic. And port 443, which is HTTPS, is secure web traffic. So if you get a question like, a company wants to block any unsecure web traffic, what port should they block? Well, they should block port 80. But if they want to only allow secure web traffic, then which port should they open? 443. All right. So those are some example questions that you might come across. Now, some of the other port numbers that I listed off that I have definitely seen in practice tests, real tests, and real life, which is what really matters, right, is DNS for sure. What is DNS? What does it do for us? What port number is it? Well, if you're paying attention, DNS is port 53, and domain name system, domain name service, you'll hear a lot of back, back and forth, domain name server, it's going to translate websites or places in our digital world from the IP address to the actual domain name. 
because you don't want to memorize the IP addresses for every website and service that you use or visit. Google.com, Yahoo.com, IMITtraining.com, YouTube.com, they all have an IP address and you probably have no idea what those are. And that's okay because DNS knows what they are for you. That all travels on port 53. All right, some other important ones here from my CompTIA list. Uh, DHCP, so port 67 and 68. DHCP is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This is the thing that gives you all the numbers and background information you need for a device to get on the network. It's going to issue you an IP address, a subnet mask, it's going to tell that device where the router is so it can communicate with the router, other devices in the network, as well as other things outside of the network. So DHCP is definitely an important one. Let's see. Random story, how I remembered Secure Shell. Don't judge me, I passed. All right, so uh, Port 22, I was introduced to it around the time this cool movie named Turbo came out. There was a snail, it fell into some Red Bull, whatever. So I was trying to figure out how the heck to remember all of these port numbers because when they're brand new, it's a lot, right? And I literally had to, and uh, I'll just put my drawing in this general area once I make it. Anyways, so in my lovely little mind, again, I'm certified, so don't judge me. I literally drew a number two and another number two right over it. And I was like, oh, it has a shell, like turbo. And that's how I remembered Secure Shell. Anyways, the point is, no matter how random your story is and no matter how you make it fit in your brain and stick there, just make sure that you're comfortable with your port numbers. You should be able to rattle these things off back to back to back. Now, there's no easy way. It might take some funny stories. It might take some random movies. It might take some flashcards of memorization, but you can definitely do this, right? Because now I can look at you and say 2021, 22, 25, 53, 67, 68, uh, 1, 2, 3, which is the network time protocol. 1, 2, 3, you're counting time. Uh, 8443, 110 goes with 143, that also goes with 25. You just got to associate these things together and be comfortable and be confident in them. I know it kind of sucks, but once you have your A plus port numbers known, then you can start stacking because they are going to need you to memorize all of these plus a couple more for Net Plus plus a couple more for Security Plus. And we will talk about the Net Plus and Security Plus port numbers that you need to know in another video. So subscribe to my channel, connect with me on Instagram, and I will see you back here soon.